The Soul Redeemer, Book 2, Chapter 3b, Revelation. I.S. roared with hatred for these two women. He had intended for the calf dream to reactivate an old program in Nicole that had been buried deeply within her. He had hoped that it would allow him to take immediate control over her, but instead it had alerted her to his presence. And not just within her, but in his stronghold over Samaria. He was livid. He, the master of self-control, was beginning to feel as if he were spinning out of control, and he was furious. If truth be told, he was scared. It seemed that every attempt to remain hidden was failing as the encroaching light in the intercessors was getting very close to exposing him. He knew that his power in Samaria was reliant on the darkness and his ability to move and work under cover. The one comforting thought was that while Nicole recognized him, she had no idea that there was a failsafe in place that had been planted deep inside her mind, something that she would never recognize. And if she didn't recognize it, he would always have a stronghold in her. Yes, it was time to play the trump card. Marcus had been Nicole's handler in the occult with ties to the Freemasons and the Illuminati. When he died, Damon became his successor. That night, I.S. paid a visit to Damon with an assignment. He could do this on his own and would often sexually accost ignorant or vulnerable men or women in their sleep. However, when he joined himself with a willing human spirit who could implant human seed, the effect was much more powerful. He knew that Damon was more than willing. The two spirits, one human, the other not, astral projected to Nicole's bedside while she slept. Lately, I.S. had been dreaming about this day. Once they were activated, either she would run home to Daddy or the seeds of destruction that would be implanted in her body would destroy her. And Nicole, the thorn in his side, would be wiped out of his way like a fly off of a windshield. There she was, sleeping so soundly beside her husband. Too bad she wouldn't know what the cause of her impending death was going to be. Ayaz would love to torment her, but he could not risk detection. As Damon's soul spirit entered the bedroom, he saw the large angel Cantor, who was assigned to Nicole and another, Jair, or he will illuminate, who was responsible for guarding Jake. He had learned the hard way not to provoke these angelic beings and to approach his subjects with caution until he was certain that there would be no interference on the angel's part. It was odd that sometimes his mission would fail because the angels would not allow him access and other times they would stay still and silent, permitting him to complete his task. He had actually been here before and he had been hindered. On this occasion, as he moved to Nicole, the angels did not move or intervene. Good. Now he would have some fun. Nicole dreamed that there was something that smelled terribly bad. In the dream, she looked around and found a dead goat under their bed. She pulled it out and got rid of it, only to be attacked by fleas that had remained behind. The next morning, Nicole felt confused. The dream was a little disturbing, but even more so were the signs that she had engaged in sex because she didn't remember doing so. She asked Jake if they made love, and she couldn't hear his exact words that he murmured, but she understood the answer was in the negative. Then there were the bruises on her arms, perfect finger and thumbprints on both arms. Nicole's stomach lurched in fear. Was there another part of her that she didn't know about that had taken over while she slept and had led her to do something terrible, she wondered? I.S. had been worried about those bruises, but the good thing was that she had opened the door to fear. He told this spirit to torment her relentlessly. 
But this time, Cantor and Jair both stepped in front of fear and refused to let it get close enough to Nicole to attach. Drats! She had called out to Jesus, and now the spirit of truth was speaking to her, and she was listening. As Nicole knelt by her bed praying, Jesus said, Nicole, this is Incubus Succubus. You've seen him before outside the window at the time of your baptism. Do you remember? And yes, he was the one who accosted you at Trisha's and who appeared to you in the calf dream. I told you that one day you would meet him again when it was time for you to overcome his power and that you would then be able to teach others to defeat him as well. As you are becoming aware, he is a principality over many, and my plans are for my people to be free from his domination and control. I am a jealous God, and I alone desire the worship of my people. There can be no other gods before me. Nicole thought about the dream with the calves and realized that it represented her own bondage as well as Samaria's. I do remember, Lord, she said. But why did you let him slime me? I'm so disgusted and ashamed and... Stop it, Nicole, Jesus demanded. And she did. I'm sorry, Jesus. What do you want me to do about this? I want you to understand how Satan works. I never violate a person's free will. And Satan is not allowed to either. When a choice is made by a person within my kingdom to obey me and do my will, my blood protects and the Holy Spirit's power is activated to bring about my plans and purposes. But when a person chooses to act on a sinful temptation, this opens the door for Satan or his demons to step in and create strongholds. This is why Satan works so hard to cause abuse and trauma in people, especially children. Through these events, he tries to destroy their hope, to crush their spirit, and destroy their trust in God. Then, in desperation, in moments of vulnerability, pain, despair, rebellion, etc., they will listen to the lies and deceptions he sends their way. The deception is enticing because it sounds like truth, and it resonates with their fleshly desires. However, even one drop of defilement in a full cup of pure water defiles all of it. It is the same with everything that Satan says. It is all laced with deception and defilement, and once they choose to believe his lies, they will act on them. When they act on his lies and disobedience to God, then the sin opens the door to him. Understand this, Jesus continued. It is not the bad things that happen to them that create the strongholds. It is the lies they listen to and choose to believe in response to the bad things that creates strongholds and leads them into bondage. Nicole scratched her head. Are you saying that I chose to sin because of lies I believed in the past which opened the door to IS? I thought I had dealt with those. Yes, came the reply. The lies of the past were exposed and renounced, and I was covering you in righteousness, protecting you from the assault of the enemy, until you pushed me out of the way. I pushed you out of the way? When and how, Lord? Immediately an incident came to Nicole's mind. Sometime before, she had picked up a romance novel that had, she had just happened to see in the drugstore that caught her eye. She had justified the conviction in her heart at the time, and again as she read the graphic words of sexual intimacy between unmarried partners, she had been thrilled and repulsed at the same time, but she had read it all the way through in spite of the Holy Spirit's nudge. She remembered that he had continued to convict her, and she had finally confessed the sin to God, repented, and had burned the book. She knew that he had forgiven her, but she had not renounced the enemy and shut the door on him because she had not even been aware of his presence. Oh, Jesus, I'm so ashamed. I failed you and opened myself up to the system at this attack. What can I do now, Lord? Help me. Nicole, I.S. is a familiar spirit to you because of his past involvement in your life through generational curses, soul ties, and the counterfeit marriage to Satan at the satanic ritual. 
but we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Then there will no longer be a doorway. I will make you new and seal you with my spirit. Peace returned to Nicole's spirit, and Jesus continued, For now, you need to know that I.S. has planted seeds of destruction unto death within your body. But do not be afraid. You have confessed and repented, and now as you renounce ties with the enemy and take authority over him, I will begin to destroy the work of the devil in you and will raise you up as a mighty warrior against this specific principality. The fleas in the dream came back to her mind. Lord, the goat represents I.S. and the occult, doesn't it? The fleas are the seeds left behind even when the strong man is gone. Can I cast this I.S. spirit out? I don't want him, she groaned. All in my time, little one, Jesus answered. Remember what you are learning about displacing principalities. Humble yourself, Nicole. Submit to me. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Nicole dropped to her knees and began to renounce association with the devil. She confessed that she had opened the door to the enemy through her sin and confessed that she had participated, even though unknowingly and unwillingly, in sex with an unclean spirit the night before. Then she asked for forgiveness and cleansing by the blood of the Lamb. Under the direction of the Holy Spirit, she asked for his fire to come and burn up all the seeds that had been planted in her body and soul, and that if any had put down roots, that those roots would be poisoned with the holy blood of the perfect Lamb of God. In Jesus' name, she commanded all evil spirits that had attached themselves to her or to Jake, their children, family, friends, pets, finances, property, jobs, ministries, through this event to release them and go to the feet of Jesus and wait for his judgment of them. In Jesus' name, she canceled all spells, reversed curses, and renounced plagues. She asked the Holy Spirit to shut the door and set his seal on it. And then she prayed that Jesus would pour his healing oil in her spirit, soul, and body to repair any damage that had been done. She asked for protection and blessings over all areas of attack. Jesus smiled and said, Well done! Now follow me, I have things to show you. Nicole felt cleansed, but not completely released. Jesus had said that I.S. was a familiar spirit. She wished it would just go away, but it seemed as though this was going to be a process. So she got dressed and decided not to worry because she knew the Lord would be faithful to guide her into complete freedom in time. I.S. was seething with rage, but he took comfort in the two things he knew. Nicole was unaware of Damon's involvement, and she was even more unaware of the hidden failsafe. There was still an undetected open door.